Thank you, Mary Ann. Great to be back with you uh, today. Uh, the church is looking wonderful, and uh, we continue our Advent worship uh, with this second Sunday in Advent. We welcome you to Good Shepherd. If you are a guest or a visitor this morning, welcome in the name of uh, Jesus, and uh, may he bless your time as we uh, worship together this morning. Our order of worship is going to be the Divine Service, setting number three. That's on page 184. Since we are in the season of Advent, we do omit the glory in Excelsis, so that will not be sung this morning. Our opening hymn, 343, Prepare the Royal Highway, we will stand on the fourth and final verse.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart. Confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and just to deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You will find the intro for this day printed in your worship. We will read it responsibly from Psalm 85. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You created the You covered all your sins. You withdrew all your wrath. You turned from your hot anger. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness springs up from the ground, and righteousness looks down from the sky. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Almighty God, Judge and King, you sent John, John the Baptist as a one-man advance team to prepare the way for your coming. Come, Lord Jesus, with your grace and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Inhabit our lives and our dreams so that we may live as your people in the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is found in Isaiah chapter 40. Verses 1 through 11, and it's printed on the back of your worship book. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, and the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God, behold the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rule for him. Behold his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and he will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with the young. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Also on the back of your worship folder is our epistle lesson for this morning from Second Peter chapter three, verses eight through fourteen. We're going to read these verses together, and then following the reading, we will rise and sing the triple Alleluia on page 190. Let us first read from 2 Peter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill its promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with the roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. Gospel according. 
going to St. Mark, the first chapter. The Holy Gospel, Mark 1, verses 1 through 8, will be our sermon text for this morning. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness, and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to see him, and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. As a congregation of people in this place, we will confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's on page 191. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven. Amen. 
Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Text will serve as the base of our message is our gospel lesson from St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Dear friends in Christ, just over a century ago in the year 1919, a young lieutenant colonel and 250 soldiers made the first road trip across the United States. Now the caravan traversed for 3,242 miles through 11 states in 62 days, an average of 52 miles a day. Poor roads, rough pavement, winding routes. The message was clear. For our nation's security, and to move forces and equipment in case of attack. To say nothing of ease and comfort, there needed to be a better way. The young lieutenant colonel was Dwight David Eisenhower. And 40 years later, as president, Eisenhower instituted the interstate highway system that allows us to make that same trip in well under a week. Now John the Baptist entered a world where the way for the Lord's arrival was rough and windy, just like that first American road trip. John is the advanced man who comes to prepare to make straight the way for the greater one following. And as he proclaims a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, the way is opened up and prepared to meet our Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist is a one-man advance team. Now this one-man advance team is foretold by Isaiah. He is the last prophet of the Old Testament. He lives in the wilderness, and his camel hair clothing, his diet of locusts and wild honey. But John's message was urgent, and it was unmistakable. The long-expected Messiah is coming. Now is the time to prepare. You see, this wilderness desert locale is an appropriate place to begin his work. In the desert, you might remember, the Lord had molded his people into a nation once they left Egypt. In the wilderness, that same God comforted Elijah from the fury of Ahab and Jezebel. And the harsh reality of the land stand in contrast to the lush paradise of Eden. It is a picture of a sinful degradation of God's once perfect creation. John the Baptist, this one man advance team, had to let the people know he was not the Messiah. He himself and puts it all on Jesus. He's humble. Jesus is the center and the focus of this one-man advance team. John prepared for Jesus by pointing away from himself to Christ. And that works for us, too. John prepares for Jesus by turning us from our sins to Christ. John could have reveled in the attention. What a great preacher he was. And how about his faithfulness to God's calling? After all, he was the one spoken about centuries before as the guy who would be the special messenger of God. That can be pretty seductive. Maybe the advanced man wanted to become the star attraction. Oh, how we can relate. We think at times we are the show. I mean, we walk out of mire, and we don't just throw a few pennies in the kettle. 
We fold up a dollar bill and we push it downward. What a good boy I am. And after a little office party imbibing, your co-workers come up to you and tell you that you are the one in the office that they have always admired. And you believe it. And people are gracious to compliment you on a sermon. And you start to think you're John the Baptist. And how about everyone that gushes over your Christmas sugar cookies? And you are the next Betty Crocker, ready to hand out your recipe with a wink and a smile. John comes preaching a message of repentance. And we think we would have done a good job with that. None of us, though, can properly prepare ourselves to meet Jesus. It is the Lord that graciously calls us to come to him. No sinner can stand in his own strength and in God's presence with his own works or his own character. I mean, look at Moses when he saw God. Or look at Peter and James and John on the mountain with the Lord. They were overshadowed with his being. This one-man advance team boldly proclaims a message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. This is a gift of God. Many of us can misunderstand and think that repentance is kind of our own doing. But John's baptism is unique. One first must be washed to be able to repent, be forgiven. And you see, people all over the world came out to John. And they were baptized in the Jordan, and they were confessing their sins. And they were told to turn from those sins and to cling to the one that John was proclaiming. And though they didn't know his identity yet, they were trusting that their sins were being forgiven by the Christ, the Messiah. And they were. And our sins are being forgiven because Jesus took them from his own baptism by John in the Jordan. And he took them to the cross. And our sins of pride are washed away as we trust Christ and him crucified. You see, the focus today of the Christian church should always be on the one this advanced man proclaimed. John's work was completed and he is numbered with the martyrs who gave their life in service to the Savior. He enjoys the eternal life we are looking forward to. The advanced man did his job. Here comes the king. Amen. Each of the petitions will conclude with, let us pray to the Lord. Will you please respond, Lord, have mercy. We pray that the Lord's face would shine on us.
that we may be saved, and that Christ would lead us in straight paths as he once led Joseph like a flock, bringing us out of the bondage of our sins and planting us securely in his eternal promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For diligent and faithful pastors that, like John the forerunner, they would preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins and herald the Messiah. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For us and our fellow citizens that God would preserve us from placing our trust in princes and mortal men who come and go like grass before his breath. For our nation, that God would give rulers who will rule after his good pleasure, keeping order and protecting life. And for godly quietness and honesty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick and sorrowing, that the shepherd of Israel would give ear to their need, for healing, courage, and perseverance to all who cry out to God, that they may find comfort in his enduring word and the certain hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In the memory of the saints before us who rest in the Lord's presence and for the church on earth awaiting the coming of Christ, that God would preserve us both until he gathers us to himself in the new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you one God now and forever. Amen. Our worship will continue now at the top of page 194 with our service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord 
Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God the Father, the without source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Morning. Morning. Again, great to be back with you. I was going to make a big deal about paying under three dollars for gas in Missouri and Kansas, but this morning it was under three dollars. So yeah, it's great to see that around here as well. Uh, great to be back. Uh, we had a nice weekend, and uh, wonderful to see all of you again. Uh, this week, uh, you may have noticed already in the bulletin, I am going to be pretty much. I've got uh, three different places I'll be going, and next weekend we'll be gone as well. We'll be back by Sunday, but uh, just uh, please be aware of the uh, schedule. If you need to talk to me, you can text me, and uh, we'll be here uh, Wednesday night as well, obviously. Uh, also, we've got a lot of uh, things out in the narthex. Hopefully you have enough room to move around. So let me just point out what all those things are. Uh, we have the Advent devotional booklets on the table. We have another table that have your offering envelopes for 2024. Uh, on another table, you can sign up for poinsettias, and uh, I understand we still need a few more. Is that right, Diane? 